Hi guys, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting and today we're going to go through the third and final part of this three video series on how I use Onyx to prepare for hunting season. Today guys we're going to finish up the last video in this three part series. Uh, if you remember the first video was how I use Onyx maps in the winter time to find some perspective public land and then set up some possible hikes. Uh, the second video was uh, me and the pup out in the field actually plotting waypoints and today's video is simply going to be taking those waypoints and summarizing them so that it's an easier map to use and read for hunting in the fall. First of all, when I take a look at the map, it's usually been a few weeks since I've been there, so I take a look at the map and I just kind of refresh myself on some of the things uh, that I collected when I was out in the field. Uh, to begin with, uh, this winter I had plotted two possible parking spots, and when I got there I found that this was the best parking spot. So I can take this parking spot up here, click on it, hit delete, delete again, and I eliminated that parking spot and now this black means that's my definite parking spot. The other thing you see here is that the yellow dash lines uh, from my first video in this three-part series was when I set this map up at home uh, over the winter. Just gave me an idea of a proposed hike or the areas uh, that I think I'd like to hit when I'm out in the field. If you take a look at the blue, you'll see that the blue is my actual track after hitting the tracker function on Onyx and you'll see that it's it's not exact, it's close. I mean the yellow dots just give me an estimate of where I'd like to go. You'll see a couple of different things. First of all, I didn't do this last section up here. There's no blue dashes and you see no blue dash from the truck here to this beginning point. If you remember back to my second video, I had forgot to hit the tracker right away. So the next thing that I wanna do is I wanna sit down and I wanna to begin to eliminate some of these uh, waypoints to make it easier to read this map. Right now with all of these different waypoints on top of one another, it's really confusing and you really can't get an idea of what we're trying to see on this map. So I'm gonna go through to begin with and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and I'm gonna start with these red trail markers that you see right here. I use these red trail markers uh, to represent logging roads. So what I do is I go to the line function and for me I use black and I use dash to represent uh, these logging roads and I'm gonna start right here at the point that I parked and I'm gonna begin to click along the way showing this logging road that I followed coming in here. And this is about as far as I followed that logging road right there. So I'm going to double click, hit save, and now you'll see if I go to the topo part of the map, it's real easy to see this logging road right here. I'm going to then eliminate these trailway points that I had just delete them real quick, get them out of the way. And if you take a look now, you can see from my vehicle until this point right here at the end, I was able to eliminate those trail symbols that you see. 
just gives me an idea of a path that I can walk in on that is not walking through the woods, especially at dark. Not only is it easier for me to walk in, but it's also a lot quieter if you can try to find logging roads to get in. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do the same thing on the rest of the map of the rest of these logging roads that I found right here. Now that I have all these logging roads marked in black dashes, uh, I've eliminated all those red trail symbols that made it a little bit more confusing to see the map. I've also eliminated this red line up here where I had intersection of two different logging roads because of the possibility of putting a tree stand there. So now I'm going to move forward and I'm going to do the same thing with the deer trails which you see with the purple trail symbols uh, shown on the map here. I'm going to go to the line tool and deer symbols I put in the light purple and dots. And I'm going to connect these. And again, I'm only connecting the ones that I know. This next deer trail that I'm going to mark here, I estimated one of the points looking up the trail. And then these ones are a little bit easier because I actually followed this deer trail. So my actual blue tracker shows me exactly the line I was on right here following this deer trail. And I didn't go any further on that side of the stream right there. A couple things you'll see here is I had a couple water crossings marked. And if you look closely at those water crossings, I'm again going to hit the line distance. And this is a deer trail that I know came down across here. Hit this water crossing, went back up the other side, I'll hit save. And again, I saw the same thing downstream just a little ways. This deer trail right here intersected the one I had followed diagonally downhill. And now if you take a look, you can see where these two water crossings are marked. I can eliminate those now because I've drawn the deer trail going across the actual creek itself. And now there's just less waypoints on the map and it's going to be easier to see at a later time. So I'm going to go through now. I'm going to eliminate some of these different deer trail signs or waypoints. What I want to show you guys is just a little bit of comparison for these ones that I already completed in relation to the ones that still have the waypoints on the map. Gives you guys that visual image that it's definitely easier to see and interpret the map. Got one more that I need to draw in right here. Eliminate these last couple of deer trail waypoints that I made. And then go ahead and zoom out a little bit and show you guys this end of the map here where I eliminated my deer waypoints. Just much easier to see and read the map as comparison with up here where you still see all these waypoints present right there. So just a little bit cleaner as you're eliminating getting rid of some of those symbols that you see. Here's another logging road one that I didn't get rid of. I can get rid of that one now. So I'm going to go through the rest of the map and I am going to draw out the rest of the deer trails and eliminate the purple trail waypoints. This one right here on the other side of the creek was a little bit unique because of the fact that I had a couple rubs that I put on instead of the actual trail symbols. So I'm going to eliminate this trail symbol but I'm going to maintain uh, the rub. And when I click on that rub, sometimes I'll put notes or pictures here to give me a little bit more information. Uh, this rub that I'm looking at right here, hunt either end of buck bedding area, I wrote down as notes. And then I went ahead and I added two pictures 
uh, of a couple of rubs that I saw in this area. The deer trail symbols I'm going to eliminate. The scrapes and rubs I'm going to leave on that map. So I take a look, I can go back and eliminate some more of these. I think you guys are getting the point by now. Just really cleaning the map up by getting rid of all these waypoints because they all get stacked on top of one another and it's difficult to read the map. By the time I get ready to get out there in the fall for hunting, I really want to see only the scrapes, rubs, tree stands, uh, any special data like food types and then also other people's tree stands and ways in which I'm going to get into that area. I think this is my last section right here that I'm gonna go ahead and trace out the deer trail. I'm gonna double back on this one a little bit, it just saves an extra waypoint uh, because this is one that I had the deer trail extending across the creek with this crossing symbol and it was heading the direction up into the farmer's property. But obviously I couldn't go any further than that because here's our public land, this is private land. So all I did was estimate where those trails went onto that private land. It's not my property, I'm not gonna step on it. I'm gonna respect the property that's surrounding this public land. If I ever did shoot a deer and wanted to go retrieve it, uh, if it, tra if it went on to someone else's property, then obviously I have some names here in which I could get in touch with some people, uh, knock on the door, or try to get a phone number, or give them a call before I ever think about going on their private property to track a deer. So I'm gonna zoom back out again. Now I take a look at it, all of my logging trail symbols in red are gone and now I simply have black dash lines. All of my deer trail symbols shown in purple are gone and now I have uh, actual purple dashes to represent the deer trails that you see going through this property right here. Obviously, there's probably 100,000 more deer trails there, but those are the ones that I encountered, and then those are the ones that helped me determine where I was going to put some tree stands. So a couple other things you see on this map. This was the apple tree uh, that I had marked on there. Really, I only put that plot on there, waypoint, to give you guys an indication how you can use different waypoints for food sources. Uh, this was the point of interest where we said it was within 500 feet of a dwelling so you could not discharge firearms. I talked about that in the second video. This is one I put there in the winter representing a possible place I thought was buck bedding. That was definitely a nice steep slope which kind of faced east. Had a lot of hemlocks on that slope. There was some flat benches and some areas right there underneath some evergreens which I definitely found some buck beds so I'm going to leave that symbol there for me. Uh, this red X I got to go back to and see. Oh, you know what that was? That was just a red X, meaning that this was an area that I wanted to take a look at. I had set this up in the winter time, so now I can eliminate that red X. Another water crossing symbol right here I didn't eliminate yet. Get rid of that one. And then down here in this corner, you can see I've got an idea of a possible tree stand here and a definite tree stand right there. Move up the property a little bit. I've got a definite tree stand you see here. I did see a water crossing there, but I really kind of just skipped past. Uh, so I'm just gonna leave that water crossing symbol because I really didn't mark any deer trails. But this one here, I did mark the deer trail. So I'm gonna get rid of that water crossing symbol you see. This brown plant symbol that you see, this waypoint to me represents food. And because it's brown, to me it represents uh, oaks gives me an idea of the food source that's there. The white food symbol represents fields and the yellow food symbol uh, represents um, evergreens. Actually, I usually make that more of um, a bedding symbol than I do a food symbol. So I'm gonna go back and change that, click on it, hit edit, go back up to the symbols, find the one that says bedding area, hit save 
and now you take a look some of these specific symbols. Here's oaks, here's fields, and here's pines that you see in this area. Really for the most part, uh, most of what I want to do on this map is complete other than sitting down and determining how I want to get into these different tree stands. So I have three definite tree stands in this property and what I'm gonna try and do with these three tree stands is determine what the best ways are to get into these tree stands. Also take a look at the wind directions I have. This tree stand was on the south side of this deer trail and I'm gonna type in here for notes when I edit that I'm gonna hunt this tree stand either in a north wind or a northwest wind or a northeast wind. I'll go into my notes, capital N, capital NW, capital NE, and that tells me that the winds that I want to hunt are north, northwest, and northeast, so I do not want to come in from this direction. I'm going to hit save on that for the notes, and I'm going to go back and take a look on what is an easy way to get in here. For me, I'm going to use white dashes and the white dashes are going to represent me walking and these white dashes are going to parallel right along this logging road and then I'm going to begin to work myself up into this tree stand. I'll hit save and now that gives me the idea of how I want to get into that tree stand. So I'm coming in not only from the opposite direction that winds are blowing, so the winds in my face and the deer aren't smelling me come in, but also uh, where the trails are. I'm not coming across any trails coming into this tree stand before I sit down. Taking a look at this next tree stand right here, see if I put any notes in. Again, I didn't put any notes in. This one was a little bit more difficult taking a look at. I do remember, because it was only a few weeks ago, that there was a deer trail here. There was all sorts of rubs here. There was a deer trail going away. There was a four-wheeler trail coming in. So this is one that I'm gonna come into it a little bit differently. I could find an alternate parking area up in here, like I originally had marked on the map. But I think I told you guys at the beginning of the video that there wasn't any real easy place to park here. There you go, I'm telling you. Sometimes it doesn't plot exactly where you want it. It just showed an example right there. So I went ahead and clicked on it over here and hit save. So if I can find a parking area there, that would probably, probably be a preferred way to come in. Um, somewhere in this direction right here, I would have to cross one trail at the very end. But I think for my intense purposes right here, I'm gonna eliminate that vehicle symbol because I already checked on that. It wasn't an easy way to get in. Again, I'm gonna drop the line symbol. I'm gonna use white dashes to represent me coming in. I've already paralleled how I'm walking in on this line. So I'm gonna go from this logging road that I see right here, try to make it easy for myself. And I'm gonna come up here probably cross over that four-wheeler trail and then I'm gonna drop down in from behind in this stand right here. Hit save on that and it'll show you my path coming in parallel to my first path but it hit this logging road and then it came up and dropped in behind this stand. Here it is where the trails are right here. I really looked at this one and I think this is going to be more of a west or a southwest wind to hunt here. So I'm gonna click on this tree stand symbol. I'm gonna to go to edit, uh, take a look at the notes, and I'm gonna click west or southwest wind, hit save. And now I also know I'm coming into this trail right here where the wind is in my face and I'm not disrupting what I think is gonna be a bedding area right here off of these uh, rubs that you see. The last tree stand that I see right here, I'm gonna click on again, and it says west, slightly northwest wind. 
So here it is west, slightly northwest wind. So I know I don't want to come in from this direction. It says that I have a four trunk tree in which I'm going to be in the middle of it. And I even showed a picture of that tree in which I'm going to put my XOP climbing sticks and my lone wolf hang on stand to get up in here. Uh, it's nice. Uh, really there was some open shooting lanes out of here but there's also going to be a little cover up there too to make it a little bit more difficult for the deer to see me so again i got to figure out how i'm going to get into this one and what i think i'm going to do is use this same trail that i had coming in for the other two dots white i'm going to come the opposite direction down this logging road and then i'm going to kind of come up a little bit and I'm gonna to have to cross a little bit of a field right here to come in I'll spray my boots down before I do that and now I have a possible path to get into this tree stand as well with this proposed path coming in in the morning I'm gonna stay out of an area where I think some deer could be bedded in this region with either this west or this slight northwest wind coming in this direction so now I have my logging trails marked, I have my deer trails marked, I have my tree stands marked, I have left points of special interest for me, and I've also marked the white areas in which you're going to give me an indication how I'm going to get into these tree stands. So the last couple of things I'm going to do on this map, I'm going to click on my proposed hike that you see here, I'm going to hit delete, get rid of it. And you'll see all of those yellow dash lines are now gone off this map. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my track, hit delete, and now my track is gone. And now when you take a look at this map, it's much easier to read. There's a lot less symbols on there. Very few waypoints are stacked on top of one another. And now I'm in a situation in which I know how I'm getting into these different tree stands. I know where I'm parking. I know where the different food symbols are, where the different scrapes and rubs are. And it allows me to go back to my notes, checking these black tree stand waypoints and know the wind direction that I have so that the night before watching the weather channel, I can determine which of these three stands might be best to sit in that next morning or evening based on the prevalent wind directions that I have that day. So there it is guys, uh, third video in this series, a little bit shorter, but gives you an indication of how I take all of my waypoints that I collected in the field and I summarize those waypoints and eliminate waypoints and make it easier for me to be able to read this map when I get ready to go hunting in the fall. Hope this helps you guys out using Onyx. Uh, personally, I think it's a great program. Uh, I have used it extensively since March and I'm looking forward to uh, using all these maps I created to get out on public land this fall. Uh, enjoy nature and hopefully have an opportunity to get a big buck or two. Okay, guys, I hope you have a great day. Hope you liked the video. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll talk to you guys soon.